On this Debaco University video, we're going to go over beneficial insects if you identify spider mites in your cannabis production plants and how to go about best controlling them without the use of insecticides. All right, let's get into the video here. So if you identify spider mites, you want to control them, this hopefully will provide some help for you. So first off, this is all based off of a research article. Welcome to look at this. They look at more than just spider mites. Uh, so if you have an idea of the materials, methods, and more details, I welcome you to check out the reference here with the link provided. So first off, insects can be a challenge in greenhouse production in general, and they can cause many losses. Often synthetic chemicals have been used as an option, but with the medical cannabis kind of cultivation and strict legalizations and restrictions on the use of those pesticides, in most cases for a good reason, this is the driving force between the development of new environmentally friendly but yet profitable methods of pest control. So this greenhouse study was conducted at the University, Agricultural University of Athens. They looked at two different greenhouses, one that had the beneficial insects and one that basically did not. This is the monoecious variety they were using, as well as the uh, general greenhouse environmental conditions that those plants and insects were experiencing. Now, beneficial insects, the general release date, uh, three weeks after transplantation, beneficial insects were released into the treatment greenhouse in order to assess the efficiency of the biological control pest management strategy. So spider mites, this study specifically looked at spider mites that we can see right here. Uh, particularly the two spotted spider mites is what was studied uh, here, and that's the information that will be presented on. Throughout the, ar the article and presentation here, it'll probably be abbreviated as TSSM for two spotted spider mites. So basic measurements uh, you're looking at uh, include visual estimations of the infestation, the recording of pest species and populations, and the comparison of infestations between the two greenhouses. Only the nymphs and adult stages of the pests were counted, no egg stage. And this just shows you what some of the insects look like uh, in comparison, uh, spider mites again being this uh, A here, but you could see some of the other insects for comparison that were part of the study. So how were the pest populations determined? Well, measurements of the pests were taken in the third, fifth, seventh, and ninth week. And the spider mites were counted with a handheld digital 1600X microscope in order to quantify the efficiency of the beneficial insects. Average pest populations were measured in 10 plants, four leaves per plant per greenhouse. So it's important on any uh, insect or pest that you're looking at controlling is to have an understanding of the life cycle. Uh, have a basic kind of idea of what you're looking at, the life cycle, as well as key identifying characteristics. So I welcome you to pause the video here if you want to read this in any more detail, but just kind of some highlights there. Uh, two spotted spider mites, uh, they're technically not insects, they're related to spiders because they have eight legs, and they can go through five stages in about two weeks, so they can multiply uh, very quickly and go through this progression. Adult spider mites can have two color phases, so keep in mind that you're not just looking for one particular color, um, and they all can do very varying amounts of damage uh, there. So again, take a pause, read through this if you want to learn more about uh, spider mites because you want to know the enemy you're trying to combat. So going on to the beneficial insects specifically to target these uh, spider mites. Um, so here are the beneficial insects. And this is Neosilocus uh, californicus. Uh, this is uh, significantly cooler and warmer temperatures will slow or inhibit the production of their development. So keep that in mind. Higher humidity is generally necessary with higher temperatures. However, the Californias can persist in low humidity environments with limited food sources, which makes it a great beneficial insect to choose. The slower pace that these predatory mites feed, uh, five mites per day, and their ability to sustain themselves on pollen that allows them to survive for longer when you have lower pest populations. The full life cycle of Californicus can last between one to two weeks and is significantly influenced by temperature. So keep that in mind if you're in a greenhouse environment, what season you might be considering applying these. Then we have another one here. This is Felotila, um, formerly known as a different name. So again, maybe do some research um, as far as you know, looking at both names. Uh, that's what it's currently known as. This is a pink-brown predatory midge, and can only gets about two millimeters long. It's about one twelfth of an inch. The antennae of the male insect are covered with long hairs, with those of the female shorter and thicker. So good if you're using a magnifying loop, which would be recommended. 
The female uh, adult lays eggs inside uh, spider mite colonies. The larvae begin to prey on the spider mites immediately after hatching. The young larvae feed mainly on the spider mite eggs, and older larvae feed on all stages of the mites. So you kind of get that multiple life cycle benefit or control. The larvae eat about 50 spider mites before pupating, and the larvae are creamy, yellowy brown colorations, again, between a quarter to two millimeters long. The pupae can be found inside the white cocoons along the veins of the leaves if you're doing inspections, as you should be, of your particular uh, cannabis leaves. Now, for that two-spotted spider mite control, the predators were applied by hanging slow-release uh, sachets, as we can kind of see right here. Each of these contains about 100 predatory um, and storage mites of the California per cannabis plant. The other ones here, they are introduced by making a hole in the lid located directly in the middle of the greenhouse. So you have to be mindful as far as these beneficial insects. It's not an insecticide. You don't just mix and apply. Here we're looking at different methods of application to allow the greatest benefit for those um, be beneficial insects to go about attacking, in this case, your spider mites. Now looking at the data from the actual study here for our two-spotted spider mites, plants treated with beneficial insects saw a dramatic decline in mite popula populations. This gives you the data table, but the graph really shows it here. Week three, remember, both greenhouses, the control, which had no spider mite uh, beneficial insects added, and the treatment, which would have those added, were initially right around the same level. Now uh, looking here at the progression, spider mites definitely increased dramatically dipped a little bit in the control, but we can see the treatment group really a greatest decrease here. By week nine right here, uh, there was less than two spider mites per plant on average for those plants treated with the beneficial insects compared to over 75 in the control plants. So this massive decrease and significantly different decrease as well. All great uh, that these beneficial insects are definitely worth the time and effort they are to apply. Now, average number of pest populations here, we can see those numbers uh, in general, kind of how they were able to be reduced over time. Uh, and these are numbers in weeks. A continuous reduction in all pest populations was observed throughout the experiment, approaching zero value per plant. Now, I did look at other insects. I will have other videos on those. Uh, but this just shows you that spider mite uh, population decrease. Now, not mentioned in the study here was the persimilis. Uh, now, these do a little bit better, I will admit, when there is webbing involved. Uh, so they can be a little bit more of a benefit in that factor if your spiders have developed that protective webbing. They do want to try to break that as much as you can. Uh, the release of these as the first sign of mite infestations is advised. Once the leaf damage is serious, more than four mites per leaf, achieving the control is more difficult. So keep that in mind. You want to try to catch these early. Persimilis is a red in color relative to the pest mites, and they feed on and are best used to combat active mite populations. Persimilis will leave the area in search of alternate food sources if pest um, populations drop between a lower level. So again, keep that in mind that if your pest population is too low or you're just seeing it, this may not be your best option. Some of the other ones mentioned would be advised. Now, are beneficial insects worth the effort? Well, in short, yes. Uh, the study indicates that beneficial insects could control pest populations up to 100%. Pest management with natural enemies is very promising, very effective, safe method for plant protection as well as applicator protection. Now, what growers do need to keep in mind if you are considering this, which hopefully you are, is that proper pest identification is important since this will determine the exact beneficial insect you're going to utilize. This requires frequent scouting. Timing and rates of beneficial um, additions are important. So the, remember, you're dealing with a biological system, so keeping the um, right species, the timing, and matching the species with your pest and the degree of severity of the problem is all important to achieve a very effective environment environmentally sustainable control method.